One of my favorite sources of inspiration for my projects is the Apple website, since it contains so many unique and tasteful design implementations. Now, one of these unique elements that I've always been fascinated with is this video player, uh, which can be found on many of their product pages. It's a very minimalist video player with just a very small number of controls in the top right hand corner. So in this video, we are going to build this custom video player using Next.js and Tailwind CSS. So here's a quick demo of what we're going to build. So when the page loads, I just refresh the page. The video automatically begins playing and will automatically loop once it's complete. And in the top right hand corner, as we saw on the Apple website, there's the set of minimalist video controls with a play pause button for the video and a circular progress indicator that shows how far in the video we are. So to get started, go ahead and download the starter code using the link in the description down below. Make sure to run npm install to get all the dependencies. And with that, let's jump in. Here we have the starter code for this project. It's just a blank one page website built using Next.js and styled with Tailwind. Just a couple of things to call out in the starter code. One is all of the assets needed for this project are already included in the public folder. So the video we'll be using, some of the SVGs for the buttons we'll be using as well. And the other thing I also did is in the Next.js config file, I added an SVG loader which will allow us to treat SVGs just like React components, making them much easier to work with. With that, let's jump into the project. And we're gonna spend most of our time in the index file. So the first thing we will do is actually just put the video on screen and have it start playing. So inside of the index file, gonna remove this H tag. First, I'm gonna put a div to surround everything. And in this div, I'm just gonna add a couple of styles for the video. First, I will make this position relative, and that's because we'll do some absolute positioning on some of the children later on. Give it a width of 90%, a max width of 6XL, so it doesn't become huge on large screens. Apply a horizontal margin of auto to center it horizontally. Give it a margin of Y of 8. We'll round the corners and do overflow hidden. Then inside this div, we will put a video tag. And in this video tag, I will add a class name of width full. So it takes up the full width of the div. And I will also add a couple of additional properties, the loop property, the muted property, and the autoplay property. So autoplay means that once the video is loaded, it will automatically start playing on screen. Loop means that once the video finishes playing, it will just restart from the beginning and it will keep looping. And then muted means we will switch off the audio. Now, I could directly inject the link to the video file in the source attribute, but typically what I like to do with videos is inside of the video tag, nest a source tag where I will pass in the URL. And in this case, it's just video.mp4. And the reason I like to do this is because for a single video tag, you can put multiple sources in this video tag like this. And this allows you to provide the video tag with multiple different versions of the same video. For example, potentially different file formats of the video. And then based on browser compatibility, the video tag will automatically select the best source to load in. And so it's much can be much more performant and much better browser compatibility. But for now, we'll just put the MP4 tag version in. If I hit save, there we go. There's the video. It's on screen. The div is defining the size of the video with the rounded corners. The video is loaded and it started playing and is looping as well. It's a pretty short four second video, so it could keeps looping. So we now have the video in. Let's add some very basic controls to this video. And specifically, let's just focus on the ability to play and pause this video. Let's start by first creating a state variable called is paused. And this will store at any given point whether the video is paused or not. So initially this will be set to false because on page load, the video is already playing. I'll import use state. And then I'm going to create a simple function called toggle play pause, which will allow us to actually toggle the playing and pausing in this video. Now, in order to actually 
control the video, we need to get a reference to the video object that we have defined down here. So for that, I'm going to use a ref. So we'll call it video ref, use ref, and this will be of type HTML video element. And initially on load, it will be null because, well, the video element hasn't loaded yet. And then I will attach this ref to this video, ref equals video ref. So now we are a reference to the video, so we can do some controlling of it. So inside of this toggle play pause, I will get the video from the ref. So video ref dot current. I will then check to make sure that the video is not null because this is the one thing that you have to worry about working with refs is that they will only have a value at some point after the page loads. When this page is originally created, all these DOM elements have not been created yet and therefore the ref might be pointing to a null object. And so whenever you're working with them, you always need to check if the current attribute of ref actually has some value in it or if it's null. So we check if the video exists, if it does, We'll set is paused to whether this video is paused or not, and the inverse of that, because we're about to switch it. And then we'll say video, if video is paused, then I want you to play the video, else that means it's playing. I want you to pause the video. So again, we set the state attribute to the right value based on whether the video is currently paused or not, and therefore if we're going to pause it or not. And then we actually control the video to play it or pause it. And so now let's just go ahead and attach this function to a button of some kind so we can just test out this functionality. So for now, just above this div, I'll just create a simple button and I'll just call it button or play, let's call it play pause. And then I'll attach the toggle play pause function to the on click. Okay, not a very nice looking button, but just to test it, if I hit click it, pauses the video, click it again, it plays it. And so with that, we have play pause functionality on the video. The next thing that we want to do is we want to track the progress of this video so we can eventually use this to power the circular progress bar that indicates how far we are in the video. For this, we need two pieces of information from the video. The first is, what is the video's total duration? And then the second is, what is the current timestamp that the video is at? And then you can use that to get the progress as a percent from zero to 100%. First, let's grab the total video duration of this video. For that, I'm also going to put this in a state variable. And again, this is because we don't actually know this value until after the video has loaded. So initially, it will be null. After the video loads, we will actually attach a value to this video duration. So we first make the state variable, and then to actually set a value to it, I'm going to create a use effect that runs once the page loads. And in this use effect, I'm going to grab the video object again from the ref, video ref.current. I'm going to check if there's a valid object attached to the ref. And if there is, set video duration to video.duration. And so now once the page loads, this use effect will run. And I do need to pass in an empty array as the last argument. And it will then by that time have the video object already and we'll grab the duration of that video object and attach it to this state variable. So that is the total video duration. The second piece of information we need is the current timestamp of the video. So for this, I'm first going to set up another state variable that we'll call it video progress. This will be the progress of the video from zero to 100%. Use state type number and originally it will be at zero. Of course, when the video starts, progress will be equal to zero. And for this, I'm going to set up another use effect that will be used to check the progress of the video at certain intervals. Now, initially, you might think that the way we can get this is by attaching to a hook that already exists for the video object. And in fact, there is an event that already exists on the video object natively called on 
time update. Now this function theoretically fires at some interval as the video plays and the time, the current time of the video is updated. And this is actually originally how I tried to build this video player. But what I figured out is that this event only gets fired around once a second. And so if you're in a situation where you have a video like this one, which is only let's say around four seconds, you only get this firing after one to three and four seconds, and then as it keeps looping. But what that would mean is if we had an indicator on the screen, it would just jump from 0% to 25% to 50% to 75% which is not really what we're going for. We want something that's a very smooth updating indicator of the progress of the video. And so because of that, we can't use directly this event on time update and we need to create our own function that effectively will manually check for the new time at a much shorter interval to get that smooth progress update. So that's where this use effect is going to come in. And the goal of this use effect is effectively going to be to check every 10 milliseconds what is the new current time and then update the value of this video progress state variable based on the current time. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually first check if the video is paused or not. If it is, then we already know that there's no update to video progress because the video is paused. So we're just going to return. This will save this function from running unnecessarily in the background. I'm then going to grab the current time of the video. So for that, we're gonna say current time is the video ref, the current, and we're gonna grab current time from this video ref. You'll see that current is optional, again, because it's possible that there's nothing attached to this video ref at any given time. So I'm gonna check if two things, if the video duration is not null, and current time is not null. And what this is doing effectively is making sure that we're not in a situation where the video just hasn't loaded and the ref is just pointing to a null value. So if it's not, if we actually have values for these variables, then we're gonna wanna check for the value and do an update. So I'm gonna create a timeout for this. Call it, call it loading timeout, set timeout, we're going to have this run every 10 milliseconds, so I'll just add it to the back. Inside of this, I'm going to say set video progress to be current time over video duration. And finally, for some good hygiene, I'm going to return clear timeout, loading timeout. And this is just a good dish cleanup that says once this whole page is destroyed, essentially more or less in the DOM, go ahead and clear the timeout. So it's not just running in the background unnecessarily, even after the page is done and we don't cause any sort of memory leak or anything. And then because we have multiple dependencies in this use effect, we should add them to the use effect itself. Video progress, video duration, and is paused. So whenever any of these values are updated, this use effect will run. Now, just to get super clear about what we're doing here, what we're technically doing is we're saying, if the video is not paused, then we're actually gonna do stuff. And then what we're doing is, if we have an, a valid video object attached to our ref, we're going to actually update the video progress after 10 milliseconds with the value that we are calculating right now. That's what the set timeout is doing is it's saying run this line of code with a delay of 10 milliseconds. But because this use effect will run every time video progress is updated, there will be a cycle here. Once this, you know, let's just say we're at the very beginning, we're saying, okay, in 10 milliseconds, update the value of video progress. At that time, when it gets updated, it will trigger this use effect to run again, which will then say, okay, now in the next 10 milliseconds, update it again. And then the cycle continues again and again and again, which allows us to get a continuous stream of updates to video progress. Now, let's see how this actually works. And again, just to see if this is working, I'll just go ahead and add the value of video progress in a P tag. And I'll then just refresh the page. And look at that. We have the value is going from zero to one, but you'll notice that it ends at zero and it's not actually looping. Why is that? Well, it turns out that there is a bit of an edge case that happens some of the time, which is once the video is complete, the value of current time 
becomes zero. And so then this visual progress is set to zero. But the next time that this is run, current time might still be at zero as the video loops. And so therefore it just says to set video progress again to zero, but that doesn't really trigger a state update because it says it's the same value as a half state. So there's no update to the value of state. And therefore it stops the loop that we built of calling this use effect again and just never calls it again. And that's why it gets stuck again at zero. So to solve for this, I'm going to add a little expression here that will force an update essentially to video progress, even in this situation. So I'll say if video progress, the current value of video progress is equal to the value that we intend to set it to, I'm going to just set, not video duration, video progress to the previous value plus a very small number like this. Else, I will actually set it to the proper value on update. So what this is gonna do is under normal situations, as the video plays, it will set it to the new value as we had before. But in, the situ in this edge case where the progress gets kind of stuck, it will just manually increment the progress ever so slightly. So it's not really perceivable, but it will ensure that this function gets called again so that the progress continues to get updated as needed. So now if I hit save, and actually you already will have noticed this. Now the video is actually properly getting the right update progress even as it loops. So with that, we have set up all of the difficult parts, I would say, of tracking the video. So now let's actually convert these into a set of UI for our video player controls. That's just a little bit better than what we have right now in this top left. So let me just go ahead and move these since we know they're working. And we are going to create our custom video player controls in a separate component. So inside of source, I'll create a components folder. And inside of here, I will create a new file called video player controls. Create a new functional component. And then inside of the index file, I'm just going to go ahead and bring it in quickly. So above the div, what we're going to do is create another div. Inside of this, we're going to put the video player controls. And we know that we want this video player controls to be in the top right hand corner of the video. So for that, in this div, I'm going to give it a position of absolute, top four, right four, and Z of 10. This will absolutely position it, put it in the top right corner, four metrics from the top and from the right, which in Tailwind translates to 16 pixels from the top and the right. And Z of 10 will make sure that this sits on top of the video. Hit save and you can barely see this placeholder text there. If I were to make this text white, then we would see it very clearly in the top right hand corner, right where we want it. All right, so now let's start customizing this video player control component. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up an interface that will be used to control what the custom props will be for this controller. So create an interface called video player controls props. And we want to pass in some of the key values that will control the visual of this control setup. So first we'll need to give it, what is the progress of the video? We need to tell it whether the video is paused or not. We will pass it a function to call when we want to play or pause. This will allow us to attach it to the play bot pause button that we'll add to this controls component. And this will just be a function that has no return value. And I'm also going to go ahead and pass in a couple of visual customizers that we won't really use in this project necessarily, but will allow this component to be much more flexible if you try to use this in a different project. So we'll give it a optional size attribute that will be a number or potentially undefined and also a width as well. And we'll see how these come in in a little bit. So those will be the props. And so now let's attach to the component. So this is a functional component. We'll take the props that we just defined and then we'll also destructure these props. So progress is paused on play pause. For size, we'll give it a default value of 48. And for width, we'll give it the default value of three. Now, once we do this, we'll get an error in the index file because now it's expecting some of these props to go in. So let's just go ahead and pass them in now since we have everything set up. So progress will just be video progress that we've already set up. Is paused is the is paused state. 
and on play pause is our toggle play pause function. So all the errors go away, and so now we have everything passing into the video player controls component. So now let's go ahead and set up the actual interface, the visual interface of these controls. The first thing I'm gonna do is actually set up the indicator. And so for that, we need to first calculate some helper values that will help us visually show the circular progress bar. So first, define value called center. This will be size over two. The radius of the circle, which is center minus width. Create a value called dash array. Two times math pi times radius. This is essentially the circumference of the circle that we're going to draw. And finally, something called dash offset, which will be dash array times one minus progress. This will provide an offset for when we draw the circles so that based on the progress that we're at, it will apply the correct offset so that the right amount of the circle is showing in the progress. So all of these will be helpful inputs as we draw this indicator using SVGs. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So in this return, it'll be a div and we'll give this a couple of styling class names. So we'll give it position relative, flex box, and then we'll center everything using justify and item center. And then inside this div, we will first draw the progress indicator. So we'll use an SVG component. In this SVG component, I'll give it a width of size and a height of size. And then we're going to draw two circles in this case. The first circle that we're going to draw will have a center X of value center that we calculated, center Y of the value center, Radius R of the radius we calculated earlier. Fill will be transparent. The stroke, we're going to use just a gray for the stroke. And the stroke width will be the width attribute that was one of the properties that we defined for the component. If I hit save, you'll see there we go, there's a circle. And so one thing we could do, for example, is say, I actually want this to be a little bit larger of 60. And if I hit save, you can see it becomes a larger circle. And let's say I want the line to be thicker, let's say 10 as an extreme. And you can see it becomes much thicker. So you have this level of control now with this component. Again, we won't use it here. We'll just use the default values. So that's the baseline circle that kind of shows the total duration. Now, to show the actual duration that has occurred, what we're going to do is effectively draw another circle on top of the circle that's white, and that circle's offset will be changing as this progress value changes. So let's draw a second circle. We have many similar values, so the same center, CX and CY, same radius as well. The fill will be transparent again. The stroke this time will be pure white. Stroke width will be width. And if I save this, you'll see now the white circle that we just drew exactly overlays the gray circle, so we can't see the gray circle anymore. We now need to define the stroke dash array as the dash array that we set before. So this is the array of the stroke in sequential order that we've defined, and it's exactly the same as the circumference in this case. If I save, it doesn't do anything yet, but then let's add the stroke dash offset, which will set to this dash offset. So this will appropriately offset how much of this is drawn or when we start drawing the circle. So if I hit save, there you go. You have it being shown. And the last thing I'll just do is update the stroke line cap to be of type round, which will just change the ends of the indicator. And you can already see because we attached the progress state value, it's already doing the update and is properly showing the progress. Now, the one thing is that right now, I don't like the positioning or the rotation of this indicator. We want the kind of top to be the 0, 100 point, not the right hand side. And so for that, I'm just going to apply a rotation on the whole SVG. So in the style tag, I will just pass in a transform of rotate minus 90 degrees. And then now we just rotated it. And so now 
the top is zero 100 percent point so we have the progress indicator now let's add back the play pause button that we had earlier but in this case make it look a little bit better so after this svg i'm going to do a div we'll give it a class of absolute inside this div we'll put a button and in this button i will apply a couple class names i'm going to give this a class of group which we'll use a little bit later cursor pointer flex justify center items center to center what we're about to add to it and then most importantly on the on click i will attach the on place pause function that we passed into the component and then inside this button what we want to do is add the right svg for play and pause based on whether the video is paused or not so for that i'm first going to do a div and in this div I give a class name of fill white so these SVGs will be white. But if the group, which is this overall button above, if it's being hovered on, then we'll make the fill the same gray as one of our progress indicators. I'll apply a quick transition of co to colors so that when we hover, it will have a little fade transition duration of 200 milliseconds and ease in out. And then we have the styling done. So now we just need to insert the correct SVG into this div and for that, if it's paused, if the video is paused, I will insert the play button. Otherwise, I will insert the pause button. And so for that, because of the SVG loader we set up earlier in the starter code, I will be able to just import directly play button from the SVG. I can directly import the SVG as a component. And then I'll just copy it. And I'll also import the pause button. And then I need to now just call these so play button and pause button I hit save there you go the video is playing it shows the pause button if i hover over it, it has this hover effect if i hit it it will pause the video and then it changes to the play button and it also stops the progress indicator if i hit play it plays again and it resumes playing so with that we have finished building this custom video player if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. Also, if there are any other topics you want to see covered on the channel, let me know in the comments as well. And on screen now, you'll find a link to another great tutorial for you to check out next, and I'll see you in the next video.